Hello guys. <clears throat> Today I'm here to I'm going to teach you how to do a um, stable a basic stable overclock on the X299 Aurora's Gaming 9. This this guy should work perfectly fine on the Gaming 3 and Gaming 7 also. Okay. As you can see this is how the BIOS looks. I'm sure everyone is familiar with it. Okay. At advanced frequency settings, um, I'm going to do a um, basic one for 4.8. Okay, what I usually do is I up the, um, the BCLK frequency and give it a little juice over here. Okay, clock ratio 4.8. 4.8. Then let's go to the CPU advanced CPU core settings okay uh, TJ max I put a value of 8 so it ups the the max temperature before it shuts down or begins to throttle uh, from 95 to 105 Celsius okay um, mesh from now on, I'm still we're trying to to figure it figure out how how the ANCOR or the mesh ratio or the cache from this for for the CPUs work, but for now, 30, 32. Okay, uh, you can just leave this on out. So, active cores. Okay, Intel Speed Shift technology. You disable and go up and Turbo Boost Max technology. For some for some reason it puts it on in legacy. If you if you enable this is some kind of a bug I think. Uh, maybe I'll have to ask the someone at, at Gigabyte to to explain me because if you enable, see it stays at legacy. You put native mode, you put disable again legacy. But if you put enable here, uh, and see it changes. <laughs> so it's it's buggy. Okay. Uh, but put it on native mode and speed shift technology uh, disable. And chase multicore performance enable. This one, the C1A disable. C1 support disable. Package C state, no, you can leave enabled. If energy efficient turbo disable hardware prefetcher, you can leave on auto. Okay, I think that's about it. Okay, let's go to voltage. S power settings. Okay, uh, CPU for uh, V core load light acceleration. Um, yeah. I prefer to use this one, but you can use another one, so the it doesn't limit the the power that goes to the CPU. Okay, let's go. You can this VRIM to for VRIM to one point nine, but okay, just use the. Um, CPU V car load like and calibration and put it on extreme or turbo. I prefer extreme. Okay, um, now voltage again, CPU core voltage on auto, put it on normal. Here, just put this value zero point so it, it begins on the plus side and give it like 55 uh, right now uh, because I load defaults on the bias you see you're going to see you see this value here but the value is not that that one that this is the value you value you are looking for 55 gives more or less that 1.272 volts here okay uh, CPU mesh voltage normal same deal and three, three, uh, 0.310, that's it, okay, it's going to give a, a voltage about 1.200, more or less, okay, uh, uh, this is about it guys, you just do that, push, push F10, and you're good to go. You have a, 
uh, 4.8 overclock with every every aspect of power and performance available to the CPU and no bigger deal as you can see it's really easy to use this myos from from gigabyte okay thank you guys for watching if you like the video uh, just subscribe give it give the thumbs up anything you want just ask on the comments okay bye oh one more thing you do need a proper cooling to use this okay uh, um, don't don't try to do this this kind of overclock you can try to do it but uh, don't uh, don't don't exaggerate because the um, these CPUs do get uh, quite a bit hot, uh, especially if you give them a lot of juice, so they can they pull they pull a lot of, they pull a lot of juice. So uh, and if you give them that that juice, it's going to heat up really 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 fast. So anything this one is relatively safe. Uh, you can do anything with it. You just don't do a lot of synthetic benchmarks like primes and stuff like that because it's going to get very, very hot. But for, but for gaming and uh, any kind of workload like image editing, movie editing, it's no problem. It's stable. Uh, it, so, but benchmark, synthetic benchmarking uh, is not advisable if you don't have the proper cooling. Okay? Bye, guys. Thank you.